Tonga writes Aboriginal stories. Born in Serbia in the first half of this century, he emigrated to Australia and spent many years in Arnhem Land. But the specific details of his life are as elusive as the man himself. In critical terms, his writing has received very mixed reviews. But through his new book, Raki, it seems as though Wonga is finally being recognised as a writer who combines an extraordinary blend of cultural influences to create work that is uniquely Australian. If he had been left in the bush to follow the path of his tribal ancestors, Pijijara might have finished as a vati, a wise man, or as a mighty Nangari, shaman, but neither he nor the spirit would have much influence any longer. The shaping of one's destiny had been the white man's privilege and his favorite business was to steer the soul of others. I love the bush and uh, I love the, uh, that uh, all the fauna and flora and the earth and the country and everything. Was it your intention when you came here to, to go out back or...? Yeah, I think it was. Uh, probably it was one of the reasons that maybe subconsciously which had brought me to Australia because at that time I... I left Europe, the time I left Europe, I was very... Somehow I wasn't, wasn't very impressed with Europe. <laughs> Living through war and uh, when I was a child, I lived through war and after the war, it was just, uh, it was like a one system coming after another, which probably um, was not uh, what uh, one expects from life, and also was very hard anyway. I was told about Australia long before I, you know, the time when I grew up and somehow developed, you know, that idealized Australian outback more probably than it was there to be idealized. After arriving in Australia, Wonga headed off to the desert in search of an Aboriginal community. So my first uh, encounter was uh, I had to travel from Alice Spring to Kimberley to look for some place there. And uh, I asked someone in Alice Spring how one gets from Alice Spring to Kimberley. And uh, I was, uh, the man told me, by Camille. And uh, he actually sold me one. <laughs> <laughs> so about several weeks later, I find myself stuck in the desert <laughs> with knowing, hardly knowing much about the camel that I'm supposed to ride. <laughs> Far less about desert at all. Uh, eventually, I ran into difficulty with the uh, with, uh, water and was dying of, of thirst and was probably in, process of hallucination would have been passed away that a uh, uh, original man came about and uh, brought me almost from death. Wonga then moved up north. I lived in, uh, in Arab land for uh, about uh, five years. That was uh, on and off basis again. But uh, much of the the wife's life I learned from there, of which was later expressed in writing and was some of the books are set, set in our land. Wonga not only wrote about this period, but also documented the effect of uranium mining on tribal life. They were they are taken to requested for the uh, by Parliament House Library to as the background information for parliamentarians who were to debate the land right bills. But apparently, the photographs were removed after only one day of exhibition. The sad thing was that uh, no one had the opportunity to parliamentarians to view those photos of that impact that took the place in the 50s. If that was so, maybe it would have some bearing on the, on the current situation. 
They wrote a series of novels, and there is a look like portrait, four books. Uh, the books were written in the beginning of 70, in the late 60s, beginning of 70. At that time, no one, no one wrote anything about on that topic or in Australia, and the topic, topic was taboo. Uh, so I was, uh, I wrote because I, it made some impact on me as a topic. It was very, I thought it was worthwhile writing about. Uh, those, uh, those books were not published here because at that time no, no one, no one was uh, actually allowed to publish on that topic. So I had to publish overseas, even when the books were published overseas, they was not, uh, the publishers in Australia would not, uh, were uh, skeptical to acquire the rights because thinking that some, some uh, politically might not be the time to publish those books. In 1980, Wonga's literary agent had received a letter from Penguin regarding their decision not to publish his work. Certainly he writes well, but fundamentally I do not feel comfortable with a European interpreting Aboriginal culture and attitudes the way he does. This may be some sort of reverse racism, but there you are. But Wonga found great support amongst the Aboriginal community. During the 80s he became writer-in-residence at Monash Uni, and his sympathetic portrayals of Aboriginal life became more widely known. Well, from the year dot, since the invasion, uh, Anglo-Australians have been talking about us and quite often in very derogatory terms. It's only recently that we've had a couple right in a different way. But here we had a new migrant coming in with a fresh view, a fresh look at our country and a look at the Anglo-Australians. So that was important because uh, it had always been done uh, as a viewpoint of looking at us. But now we had somebody looking at both Anglo-Australia and Koori Australia, and that was important, I think. Do you have any ideas as to why Wonga found it difficult to be published in Australia? Well, I believe that anyone who came from outside and criticised Anglo-Australia in their treatment of our people, whom they sort of uh, use the possessive, which we, we sort of uh, reject entirely, and they would re resent anyone writing in, in such ways to criticise their actions towards us. That is the, that is the old man. Come on. It seemed that nothing exciting happened in life of Warand the Dingo. No canine writes his memoirs, but as he grew toothless with grey whiskers, Warand remembered vividly a dark-looking stranger who came to the bush spreading the word alienation. The word sounded much like extermination, which Warrand had heard throughout much of his life, and he wondered if the stranger could be Balanda White. So it's these dogs that you write about? Yes, they are, they are often portrayed in the books and the the pictures and so on, they, you know, they have quite a character in themselves and they, they uh, a lot of behaviour which is maybe new or which is uh, something to be explored or to be, you know, to be admired, and the way how they behave, the way how they move, the way how they eat and the social behavior, how they organize their pack and they, they mix and have a picking order, the way how they snatch the balls from each other <laughs> if they dare to. Yamanga is an artist from Arnhem Land. She has been illustrating Wonga's recent books, accentuating the elements of magical realism in his writing. Uh, 
Magical realism is purportedly something that's mostly done by Latin American writers, um, Marquez being probably the most iconic one. It's the idea of pushing realism into its exaggeration so that non-realistic or surrealistic things are starting to happen within, within the reality, within the mundanity of, of the particular story. Wonga is very much a writer like that. I mean, it's very, very hard to pin Wonga's material down to a simple, real, mundane experience of life. <laughs> No, actually, all joking aside, I actually much prefer this cover because this cover no. says that B. Wonga is writing a novel that's relevant to a mood now um. rather than writing. This confuses what you're doing. I mean, this sort of speaks of it as some sort of quasi-Aboriginal text and, and, and I just don't think that that's what it is. I think, I think you hit the you hit the nail on the head with the quotation, the mood of the... The mood of our times. Yes. <laughs> a lot of people would be really happy to hear that I've hit a nail on their head. Lord Wonga is associated with the with the with the world of dream or outside world of reality. Uh, again, in the in the Aboriginal society, everything outside was was you know the world was different. Everything which is outside is. Uh, one world we live in, the other world is the, is the spirit world. So that, uh, in that sense, it was actually, it was, uh, it was given to me. It wasn't, uh, and I adopted that uh, as the name. So it's my adopted name, uh, not pseudonym. Wonga's an essentially Australian writer because of his subject matters and his modes of storytelling. He's got the Aboriginal influence, he's got the Serbian influence, he's got the essentially indigenous Australian influence, he's got the white Australian influence, put all those things together, that's Australian. It's the combination, it's the collaboration, that's what Australian literature means. Uh, I don't write much for audience. Uh, in most cases, I'm more absorbed with that uh, creative thoughts in myself so that I don't uh, don't uh, really search for a, don't really design the book for audience was the was the idea catches me and was the inspiration catches me so whatever story is to be told I told regardless if it's going to be published or not.